All right, we are live. Hey, how's it going? Lee Hayward here with the live video chat for the Total Fitness Bodybuilding YouTube channel for April 23rd. So if you're tuning in live right now, let me know if this is coming through loud and clear. Just doing a test here, make sure everything is coming through on my end. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, looks like it is. Excellent. I had a few little tech difficulties, but I just want to make sure it is working. Got a, I was adjusting the settings on my microphone. So if you can hear me, if this is coming through loud and clear, please type it into the chat window. Just let me know that you can hear me, that it is coming through loud and clear. All right. Thank you. Do appreciate that, Mr. Duggan. Awesome. All right. So today we're going to do the usual. <laughs> if you're a regular, you know what the usual is. We're going to chat about fitness and nutrition and building muscle and losing fat and all that good stuff. Uh, if, if you're new to the chat, welcome. The way these work, again, is I'm going to be hanging out here for the next hour-ish. Right? Got my cup of tea. Going to have tea with Lee. When the tea is gone, the chat is over. That's the way it works. So I have, I'm not on the clock. I'm on the cup. Right. So when the cup is empty, that's when the chat's over. And I'm going to just be hanging out here and just answering your questions in real time. So if there's anything you would like to discuss with regards to building muscle, losing fat, uh, specific questions with regards to your workouts, your nutrition program, anything like that, feel free to type in those questions and topics of discussion into our chat window. And I'll do the best I can to help you out over the course of our chat today and try to give you know, decent questions. And what I mean by decent questions is elaborate on, on the, the question. So instead of just saying like, Hey, how do I build muscle or how do I burn fat? Like that's pretty generic questions. Like if there's a specific challenge you're dealing with, like you've been following a training and nutrition program and you're at a plateau. Okay. Like explain that or something like explain the challenges you're going through versus just the generic stuff. Cause I've got a lot of videos up on YouTube as it is explaining the, the generic, like how to get yourself started type of thing. If, and what we do now in these chats is this is where we can kind of look under the hood and dissect the program in a bit more detail and, and discuss the specific challenges. Because quite honestly, I mean, getting started is the easy part. Like anybody can get started. You just got to, you know, take action, show up. Eight, success, 80% of success is just showing up. So if you can just do that, you're on the right track. But once you're showing up on a regular basis, once you're actually going to the gym and eating a proper nutrition plan, that's when you can need to kind of fine tune it to a certain degree because initially you'll get results just from taking action. Like anything you do in anything you do consistently will produce results initially. But after a while, your body's going to hit a plateau and that's inevitable. That's going to happen to everybody. The best training and nutrition program, it's going to plateau sooner or later. Your body goes through that process of adapt, grow, plateau. So you start something new, your body has to adapt to whatever that new thing is. Eventually, it's, you know, you're going to go through the process of adapting. You're going to grow. You're going to see some progress from it. And then sooner or later, after a while of growing, you're going to plateau. And then once you plateau, then you kind of have to reevaluate, change some things around so you can start that whole process of adapt, grow, plateau. And it goes through a, a nonstop cycle all the time. And, and this is why it can sometimes get frustrating because you may be doing the right things, but you could get stuck in a plateau and you just maybe need to change things up a little bit, maybe tweak the nutrition, tweak the workouts, just based on where you're at at this stage of the game and in order to continue that process along. And that's where it can sometimes get a bit confusing. And you sometimes see guys who are showing up to the gym, they're consistent doing the same thing day in, day out, week in, week out, but they're not really making any changes. And that's very often wise because they get stuck in those plateaus. So if you do have any questions, feel free to share that, type it into the chat window, and I'll do the best I can to help you out during today's video chat. So who do we have? We have Lee joining in. We have Dan. We have Rod, Alan, Owen, Dario. Good. Welcome, guys. And how are things going now? I, I know like we got Lee over there in the UK. Are the gyms open now in the UK? Are you out of lockdown? Are you back in the gym or is it still shut down? <laughs> Let me know. I'm curious because I, I know that's a, an issue. I was chatting to some people who are still waiting to come out of lockdown. Like it's, it's crazy. And, and other people who are now back in lockdown again, like will this ever end? Or is this going to be like the ongoing theme for 2021? <laughs> you know? <laughs> wondering like back in the day the challenge wasn't the challenge was just getting to the gym that's not whether the gym was open right now we have a whole new challenge 
All right, Lee's saying the gyms are up and running now. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, Alan's saying they're going to open on Monday. Well, that's good. Looking forward to that, I'm sure. And, and thankfully, the gyms are open here in, in Newfoundland where I live. We're at limited capacity, so it's 50% uh, capacity. of. Uh, but thankfully, uh, where I train, we haven't had any issues. Like, I haven't had to wait at outside because of max capacity yet. So... Fingers crossed I won't have to, but it actually has been working out really good. And I usually choose my workouts around non-peak hours. Like I try to avoid the, the after work rush because that's generally the, the busiest time of the gym day is right after work. You know, people getting off work and going to the gym. And if, if that works for your schedule, I totally understand it. But you just got to realize that is the busiest time of day. The next busiest time is going to be first thing in the morning. You know, the early work or early work, early bird before work crowd is what I'm trying to say. That's the, the second biggest time. And then throughout the day, it's kind of pretty laid back. You might get a little spurt uh, during lunch hour. Uh, but then the big the big spike, of course, is the after work rush. And then it usually dies off again in the evening before they close. So that's kind of the general cycle wave of, of the crowds at the gym. So if it's at all possible, try and schedule your workouts in those non-peak hours so that not only are you in there and and able to work out with less crowd, but there's less likelihood of you actually having to uh, wait outside because the gym is at max capacity. And chances are, with the whole situation we're going through, most places are probably operating at limited capacity. Another thing I, I want to share this with you as well, and it's very appropriate for right now. Just, just give me a second. I just got my gym bag right here. I want to share this with you. Seeing we're on the topic of uh, gyms and and. COVID lockdowns and whatever. This is the mask that I wear while I'm working out at the gym because they, they came out with new regulations that we had to wear masks at the gym. So I'm wearing this plastic mask and it actually allows you to breathe really cool. So I'm just going to put it on and show you what I'm talking about. If you can get access to these, it almost doesn't even look like you're wearing a mask, but you can see, I'll try to turn. It does the job of a mask. So if I were to breathe, sneeze, spit, whatever, it's going to catch all my guck, but it's open on the side, so I still get fresh airflow. So it's not that hindering for me to work out. Like, I can breathe. It's not fogging up my glasses or anything like that, so I can get some airflow around the mask. But at the same time, if I were to sneeze, spit, cough, the mask is still catching all my droplets, if you will. So this is what I wear when I'm at the gym these days is this plastic mask. And I, I picked them up at the local... Uh, uh, just local store over the, the road there's carried them. And I, I really like it. It's it's so simple, but it allows you to actually breathe, which is something that those medical masks don't. So that's why I, I really like that one. So just a little tip, if you can find those plastic masks, and, and you might be able to pick them up at like dollar stores or anywhere. I mean, I know um that one I got at a hardware store. They just had it on the end cap aisle there, pack of 10 of them. And I picked up a box of them. And that's what myself and my wife, Trish, wear now when we're out, especially when we're at the gym. Because, again, you get the airflow around the mask. And it meets the requirement of, of wearing your mask, but it's not hindering your breathing. So that's a really cool tip. All right, let's jump into it. Let's see what kind of questions and topics of discussion are coming through here today. Uh, Owen is saying, in New Zealand, gyms, uh, no COVID here to speak of. All gyms are open. Awesome. Feeling sorry for places that are still locked down. Well, that's good to hear. I'm, I'm glad to hear that uh, you're you're back to normal. That's that's really cool. Alan saying, Scotland's lagging behind as usual. Okay, got you there. Uh, Rod, do you think cluster dextrin is the best powder carb post-workout? Usually just eat a meal. All right. All right, Rod. I actually made a video discussing the whole pre-post-workout nutrition topic. Uh, so if, if you go to my recent videos, it, it's it's one that I made not that long ago. So if and, and I go into detail, like it's literally a 20-minute long video, really breaking down the whole topic of pre-workout, during workout, and post-workout nutrition, and when you need and when you don't need all the different scenarios because th there's not a one size fits all answer to this it really depends on the individual your circumstances and and etc and i go into detail about that in that video but to just quickly answer your question you're asking do i think that the cluster dextrin is the best powder i've never used a cluster dextrin before so i, I 
got no feedback to share on that. Uh, and you're asking for post-workout. Honestly, for post-workout, I don't have any special post-workout nutrition meal. I eat my next solid food meal after a workout. And this is the general rule of thumb, is you just need to focus on your, your main meals. You don't need to really break down pre- and post-workout nutrition as much because if you're getting consistent nutrition with your meals, your breakfast, lunch, your dinner, and snacks in between, stuff like you got your bases covered. The, the whole idea of the post-workout anabolic window, like, that's for, for most people who are working out, like most guys, you maybe you're in the gym three to four days a week. That's not going to make any difference. It really isn't. Like in my case, I work out, you know, usually every other day, three or four days a week. So after each workout, I've got a full 48 hours to let my body replenish the glycogen stores and recover before my next workout. So I don't need to shuttle the, the, the carbohydrates into my muscle cells as fast as possible after a workout. I've got 48 hours to replenish my glycogen stores before the next session. So there's really no purpose in having a, a post-workout uh, meal that's going to be fast digesting and anything special. Like just your regular food will be fine. And the analogy I like to use is let's imagine we have uh, a race car versus you and your daily driver car. Now, a race car, like when they pull into pit lane, they have high speed fuel pumps to pump fuel into the car as fast as physically possible. Right? They got a pit crew of guys. They're ready to change the tires in the matter of seconds. Like everything is so streamlined and efficient because every second they waste fueling up or every second they waste changing tires or anything like that is seconds that they're losing out on the track, which could potentially cost them the race. Think of you when you're driving your daily driver and you pull into the gas station. Doesn't matter how long it takes you to fill up your car with gas. Probably not. Like if it takes you 30 seconds or if it takes you two minutes or if it takes you five minutes, like in the greater scheme of things, doesn't matter. No, nope. as long as your car gets full of gas, it's going to work. You're going to be able to do your day-to-day -day chores and all that stuff and your get to the grocery store, get to work, go wherever you got to go, and it's not really going to have a big impact. Same applies with your workout nutrition. Like as long as you top up your your workout nutrition, doesn't matter if you get it in in the matter uh, like as fast as physically possible after the workout. Probably not. Like unless you're some high performance athlete who's doing multiple training sessions a day and, and like every, every minuscule of progress makes a difference, it probably doesn't it make a, a row of beans in the greater scheme of things. Probably doesn't make any difference whatsoever. So in my case, I'm not taking any post-workout carbs, whatever. I just come home and eat my next solid food meal. And again, if, if you want the full elaborate 20 minute version of that <laughs> answer, go check out that video. I think it's called uh, pre post during workout nutrition, but it's, it's one of the more recent ones that I made, like literally only a couple months ago. So just scroll through my recent uploads and you'll see it there. Now we got Kevin joining in first time from over in England. Welcome to the video chat, Kevin. Glad to have you joining us. We got Owen saying, I know I need roughly 200 grams, one gram per pound of body weight each day to build muscle. I'm assuming you're talking about protein. <laughs> uh, but how much at a time is effective? I hear 30 grams is the max, but then I hear people saying other amounts. Great question. And that whole 30 gram maximum, like uh, the first time I seen that, uh, let me just see. I might even have it here on the shelf. I think it was this. The first time I seen that was in this book, Sliced, which was written back in... Let me get the copyright on this thing. Where is the copyright on this thing? It's a second, second. Not even a copyright date on us. Or is there? No, there's not. Okay. Okay. Um, Hmm. That's, that's weird. <laughs> that re really is weird. Uh, huh, okay. Anyway, this book was written back in the eighties, I believe, or, or, or no, maybe in the nineties, might be in the nineties. I'm not sure. But anyway, this is kind of an old school book by today's standards. It's weird. Don't even have a copyright date. I was going to reference it, but this is where I first heard of the whole, um, 30 grams of protein being the maximum you can digest BS. And th who wrote that? It was a woman wrote it. And she was giving suggestions in there saying, you know, ideally have 30 grams of protein per meal as your maximum. Now, 
I don't know if, if she was just talking about her own nutrition plan or what, but you got to think of the bigger picture. Like, let's say you have a 120 pound woman, you have a 200 pound man, and then you got Brian Shaw's 400 pound strong man. Are we all going to be able to absorb 30 grams of protein per meal maximum, right? Like, is everybody going to have the same protein requirements and digestive requirements or digestive abilities? Of course not. It's like if I'm driving a four-cylinder Honda Civic or I'm driving a V8 muscle car. What's going to burn more gas? What's going to be able to guzzle through more gas? You know, the four-cylinder Civic or the V8 muscle car? Obviously, the V8 is going to guzzle through more gas. So you can't use 30 grams as a benchmark for everybody in the world. Like that's a crock of BS. It depends on your body size and it depends on your individual metabolism and your individual needs. You can't take this blanket number and, and paint it across the board and say everybody needs this. That, that's like saying every car is going to burn, uh, you know, whatever, like burn X amount of gas. No, <laughs> it depends on the car, right? A small fuel efficient car is going to be able to burn less gas and get further on better gas mileage. You know, a gas guzzling V8 is going to burn a lot more and get less gas mileage. Like you can't put the blanket number across all people. And the same thing applies with your protein, right? So bottom line, what I want you to do is this is how I go about it. Take your daily protein requirements, which that gram per pound of body weight is a good benchmark. It doesn't necessarily have to be a gram per pound of, of body weight. It could be a gram per pound of lean body weight. And that's what I would recommend, especially for people who are overweight. Like, let's just say you got someone who's 300 pounds, but they're carrying an extra 100 pounds of body fat. Don't eat 300 grams of protein, right? Go, go with your lean body weight or your ideal body weight. That's even a better number. Shoot for a gram of protein for your ideal body weight. So uh, that would be your benchmark. And then just divide that up between four or five meals a day. That, that's what you shoot for, right? I mean, some meals may be a bit bigger, some may be a bit smaller, but don't sweat it. It's really not that big a deal. Your body will absorb the protein. The only thing is, is if you have a bigger meal, like let's just say you consume 100 grams of protein in a single meal, it's going to take longer for your body to break down and digest it, but it's still going to digest it. It's not like after 30 grams, the body says, oh, well, we can't digest any more than 30 grams, so the rest is just going to magically evaporate into thin air. Like, I mean, think of when you, you binge eat on, on pizza and potato chips. Do you think your body stops at 30 grams and say, oh, we're, we're not going to digest the rest of it. It's just going to like a fart in the wind. It's just going to disappear magically. Where is it going to go? I don't know. No, if you eat it, your body's going to digest it. It's going to absorb it. Right? It's going to become you. So if you eat the protein, your body's going to digest it and break it down and utilize it. It's not going to disappear. All right. Unless you puke it back up right? The, the food is going to get digested and absorbed. It's just going to take longer. That's it. Same thing if you binge eat, you know, on, on junk food, the body's still going to absorb it. Like it's not, it doesn't stop at a certain gram and say, oh, we're not going to absorb anymore because we're at our capacity and the rest is just going to magically disappear. Uh -uh, ain't happening, right? You're going to break it down and digest it. It's just going to take longer. So if, if you want quicker digesting, then eat smaller meals. Simple as that. And that makes sense. I mean, how do you feel after a big meal? Like, you know, think Thanksgiving or Christmas day or somewhere where you go up and you have this big, massive gorge meal. Like you just want to lie down on the couch and, you know, go into hibernation mode for the next several hours. Whereas if you eat a light snack, you can probably be active within minutes afterwards because it's not enough to weigh you down and make your body feel sluggish or stress your digestive system to the point where it actually taken energy away from your activity. So that's it. I mean, your body's going to digest and absorb whatever you eat. It's just the rate of digestion is going to depend on the volume of food. But a good general rule of thumb is just to break it down over the course of four to five meals a day and try to have, have it equally spaced out that way. So in your case, uh, you know, 40 to 50 grams of protein per meal, that would be a good, good benchmark if you're eating 200 grams a day. Uh, what are your thoughts on legumes as a source of protein? That's from Dario. All protein counts, whether it comes from plant-based, whether it comes from animal-based, whether it comes from supplements, whatever, it's all protein. It all gets digested. It all gets utilized. It all counts. Like that, that, that applies, like, for example, if you're eating, um, uh, you're like the carbohydrates that are in a protein powder. Like, do those carbohydrates count towards your daily total of carbs? Yeah, they still do. I mean, it, it all counts, 
right? So, I mean, you look at legumes, I mean, yeah, primarily it's a carbohydrate source, but there is protein in it as well. And that all gets counted towards your daily totals. You need to look at the bigger picture and add it all up. So the, the, the protein you get from plant-based foods still counts. The carbohydrates that you get from protein-based foods still counts. The fat that you get from foods still counts. It all counts. You have to look at it from the daily total perspective. And I know some people say, well, you know, it might not be a complete protein, this and that, but you got to look at the bigger picture. As long as you're consuming a wide variety of protein sources, then it's going to work out over the long term. Like, yeah, you might not have all the essential amino acids in that one precise food at that one given moment, but chances are you're going to eat more than just legumes for the whole day. Probably you're going to have some other foods in there as well. I mean, that would be a pretty boring day of eating if you just sat down and ate legumes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So when you combine all the different food sources and all the different amino acid profiles that you get from those different food sources, it's going to work out. Like it's going to get absorbed and the, those amino acids are going to get stored in your body's amino acid reserve. Like what we refer to as the amino acid pool in your body and your body's going to be able to utilize those for the recovery and growth processes in the body. So yeah, it still counts. That's a simple answer. <laughs> all right. Got John joining in saying, Lee, just wondering, is it best to strength train first before bodybuilding to get stronger with lower reps? Hmm? Is it best to strength train before bodybuilding to get stronger with lower reps? I, I guess you mean from a competitive point of view? Like, is, are you better to start competing as a power lifter versus competing as a power lifter versus whatever, or, or training as a power lifter versus training as a bodybuilder? Honestly, it really doesn't matter. You know, you, you can argue it both ways. Like there's been some great bodybuilders who started off as power lifters. There's been some great bodybuilders who started off only as bodybuilders. There's been some great uh, power lifters who were once bodybuilders who like you, you can switch it, it, it really doesn't matter in the greater scheme of things, you know, like focus on the long-term consistency. That's the most important. Now I will say this, if this is one thing that I have noticed over the years, especially when it comes to people who are taking things to the, to the extreme limits of, of muscle development, power lifters tend to be very focused on their training, very meticulous with pre-planned training cycles and bodybuilders tend to be very focused on their nutrition. Like they kind of sometimes lack in the training, whereas they just think as, as long as I'm working all the major muscle groups, I'm, I'm good. And powerlifters are very meticulous with their workouts, very structured training plan, you know, periodization and all that kind of stuff. And then with the nutrition, they're like, as long as I'm eating enough, then I'm good. So if you can kind of combine the, the training mindset of a powerlifter and the nutrition mindset of a bodybuilder and put it together, like power bodybuilding, if you will, that's probably the best scenario if, if you're looking for the ideal situation. But ultimately, it really comes down to you and maximizing your own situation. I mean, I, I've done both. I've competed in powerlifting, I, I've, but I started off as a bodybuilder and then kind of like halfway through, I was more interested in powerlifting and I focused on powerlifting then for a few years suffered some injuries and then went back to focusing primarily on bodybuilding again. And uh, I mean, but you can make it work either way, right? Like there's, there's examples of people who've made it work starting as, as, you know, strength athletes. There's people who've made it work starting as bodybuilders and then everything in between. All right. Next question. We have our Fem Shamad from Brazil. I think I know I butchered your name, but welcome to the video chat. <laughs> we got Paul joining in. He says, thanks for all the help you give on Facebook. It helped me a lot. You're welcome, Paul. Glad to, glad you enjoy it. Uh, and that's something I should mention. I, I'm doing a lot of live videos over on my Facebook page. So if you're not friends with me on Facebook, like friend me up on Facebook or follow the Total Fitness Bodybuilding Facebook page because uh, I'm doing regular live videos. I, I strive to do one a day, but sometimes I get busy and I might not make it, but you know, I'm, I'm doing at least four or five live video lessons a week. And these are going into detail about mindset, training and nutrition tactics. It's kind of like a mini version of what I do here on the, you know, their Friday live video chats, but I usually just focus on one topic of the day, just go deep into that one topic. And then that's my video lesson of the day. And then next day I'll focus on another topic, but I've been doing a lot of those over on Facebook and I like Facebook. I got to be honest. That's my favorite social media platform. I mean, call me old. I don't know. It seems like old people like Facebook, but 
it, it's it's great because it gives you video, it, it allows you to post, it allows you to communicate and chat. I mean, there, there's there's it's such a powerful platform. It's such a a well-rounded platform. Like YouTube is great for videos. Don't get me wrong, and. and but Facebook is, is great all around. It's like your one-stop shop, right? You can sell, you can chat, you can have groups, you can post your videos, like you can do it all. So that's why I really like Facebook and I, I'm doing live videos on Facebook. So if you haven't already friended me up on Facebook, then go ahead and do it. Uh, I, I think I got my Facebook link down in the description of this video. But if you just go over there and search for Lee Hayward on Facebook. It'll be me with my dad bod shirt doing a double bicep. You'll you'll see it, right? Uh, friend me up on Facebook and uh, we can connect that way. Uh, what else we got there? James is joining in. Whoops, I just lost my place. Give me a second here now. Uh, where are you? James Roberts. Lee, can I use Taco Bell as my pit stop to refuel? You can do whatever you want. <laughs> We don't have Taco Bell here where I live. I mean, I've eaten there before when I've traveled to the United States, but we don't have a Taco Bell here. Um, so I'm not really familiar with the menu. I mean, assuming they got tacos, right? <laughs> but I'm, I'm not super familiar with if they have healthier options. Like if you could get like meat and veggie salads, which you probably can. Again, I, I don't know. I'm just guessing. You could use that. Like for me, my go-to fast food option when I'm out running errands and I need to grab something real quick, uh, I love Subway salads. So I'll go into Subway and I'll get a, you know, a, a garden salad with a chopped up chicken breast or chopped up turkey breast or something like that. Put on it for a bit of protein, and just you know pile on the veggies. And then that's my my go to fast food. That's my healthy fast food, if you will, it is as a large garden salad with with some protein topped on it and. I mean, if, if you can get that at, at Taco Bell, then that would be a perfect, I you know, fast, healthy, fast food. Now, again, I, I don't know what the menu is. We don't have Taco Bell here locally, so I, I can't, you know, I can't comment. <laughs> but there is ways to eat healthy when you're eating out from home. Like, there is such a thing as healthy fast food, right? Uh, Jerry is joining us, and he says he's lost 27 pounds in four months, six more to go, probably achieve it by the end of May. Uh, way to go, man. Like kudos to you. That's, that's impressive. And you know, that's, that's, that's really good. And what's your main goal, Jerry? I'm just curious, like, what's the goal here for, uh, uh, you know, are, are you training for anything in particular, anything special coming up that you want to look your best for? Or is this just, you know, a, a personal health and fitness goal, but either way, man, that's, that's impressive. Good for you. We have a fitness emergency joining us. <laughs> Welcome. Hopefully everything's okay. Hopefully it's not that big of an emergency. <laughs> That's his username, Fitness Emergency. Um, Rod is talking about the Taco Bell, saying if you eat that, you'll have to take another pit stop to the restroom. All right, maybe you will. Again, I don't eat it that often, right? Like I, I, won't, I, I could count on my fingers of one hand and still have fingers left over the number of times I've eaten Taco Bell because, again, I've, you know, and it, it's been years. Like I can't remember the last time it was, but I know I've eaten it before. Anyway, off the topic. Uh, Rod saying he thinks too much protein will cause digestive issues. And you know what? Protein is the hardest macronutrient to digest. It's harder to digest and break down protein than it is to break down carbohydrates, which is harder than breaking down fat. So if you're going to overeat, the overeating fat calories is the easiest way to store body fat. Like it doesn't take much energy for your body to take excess fat and convert it to body fat. It, it's already fat, right? So you're eating the fat calories and it's easy for your body to take that fat and store it as fat. Carbohydrates is a little harder because your body's got to digest it and process it and store it as glycogen. And then the excess gets converted to body fat. Protein is harder again, because again, your body has to break down and digest it. And it takes more energy to break down and digest protein and then convert that, you know, into store excess body fat. Now, with that being said, you can still, if you overeat protein, that can still get stored as body fat. If you overeat carbohydrates or fat, it'll still get stored as body fat. But I'm just saying in the digestion process, you will actually burn more calories uh, through thermogenesis, like you, through the breakdown and, and the digestion process of the protein. So if you were to eat the same amount of calories, just throw out like you're eating 2000 calories from primarily a carbohydrate and fat diet versus 2000 calories from a well-balanced diet that has like at least 30% protein. 
it's less likely for the higher protein diet to get converted to excess body fat because again, the body needs to use more energy in the digestion and utilization of those calories. So that's why bodybuilders, especially when they're dieting for fat loss, they tend to bump up their protein intake even a bit more than they probably need, but they do it from a satiation point of view because when you eat more protein, it helps to fill you up and keep you feeling full longer. Like for example, you eat chicken breasts or, or steak or fish or whatever it is, it helps to, to fill you up, right? I mean, like you just can't sit down and binge on chicken breasts and, and nobody gets out of control saying, man, I went on the biggest old chicken breast binge last night and I couldn't stop myself, right? I, I ate a whole box of chicken breasts. I'm like, no, it doesn't happen, right? You, you eat two or three chicken breasts and then you're sick of chicken and you just can't eat anymore because you're full and you're stuffed. Whereas if you're looking at, you know, cakes and cookies and potato chips, you could eat the whole bag because it doesn't satiate you. Right. So that's one of the benefits that a higher protein diet has over uh, carbohydrates and fat. We got Samuel joining in. He says, want to go for a Zwift training ride this weekend? Maybe. Uh, are, are you following me on Zwift? If not, do a search for Lee Hayward. And if, you know, and we'll see. I mean, I, I'm probably going to go for a ride maybe even this evening. Right. I mean, I don't know what time it is in your neck of the woods, but uh I'm most likely going to go for a ride later this evening and probably this weekend as well. Uh, it all depends on the weather because I got my bike set up on the trainer. So like if we get some really nice weather, then I'm going to put the wheel back on and be riding it outside. But we've had a lot of rain over the last week and it's been kind of cold and damp. So that's why I've been uh, keep, keeping in on the trainer. Ideally, I'd like to get two bikes. I'd like to get another bike that I just has, have my dedicated indoor trainer bike and then another one that I'll use for swapping back and or another one for outdoor riding. But right now I'm kind of swapping back and forth and it's just a pain in the ass having to switch the wheel over and then adjust the gears because the gear ratio is a little different on my trainer versus the, the, the wheel on the bike. And it's just, it's, it just takes more time and it's, it's a, Sometimes it takes that spontaneity of just going for a ride out of the out of the equation when you got to switch it over. So, but anyway, to answer your question, yeah, let's go for a ride. Frame me up on Facebook and send me a message, and we can chat about it there. We got Johnny Guns Film something or another. <laughs> what, what's your name again? Let me just. Uh, I leave. I, I lost the place there. Where was it? Johnny. Johnny Guns Film Buff. Have you ever used a foam roller? Yeah, I've got a foam roller and I have used it from time to time, but I'm not a big foam roller advocate, meaning I don't use it all the time. If, if I'm feeling extra stiff or sore, then I may use it, but it's it's not a staple in my training. For me, uh, mobility exercises, uh, the weight training, the cardio and stretching, that's my primary form of exercise. Foam Foam rolling, that's way down on the priority list for me. Like I may, if, if I use it once a month, that's it. Literally. Uh, I find as long as I'm doing regular exercise, regular cardio, regular stretching, uh, that that's, that kind of takes care of the, the aches and pains and everything else and gets the stiffness out. I would much rather do a, a stretching or a yoga session versus a foam rolling session. And that's one of the things I sometimes do for active recovery is these follow along yoga workouts. Just put up a, a YouTube video with the yoga workout follow along. And I mean, it's, it's awesome. I mean, it's great for uh, like active recovery because it's, it's, it's relaxing, but challenging at the same time. You know I mean, I, I follow like beginner intermediate yoga. I'm not doing crazy handstand stuff and all that kind of twist yourself into a pretzel. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm just <laughs> a bit low key here, uh, but still it, it's challenging enough. And I find that the thing I like about yoga is it's good for stretching and mobility and it, it works muscles in ways that you'll never work them in the gym or with cardio because you're going to be putting yourself in these weird positions and, and just help to build up the stabilizer muscles and, and build up your flexibility and your mobility in ways that you never would normally do with your regular weight training exercises. All right, we got another question here. It's saying, are flax seeds good for young people? Uh, I'm not a big fan of flax seeds in general, but flax seeds are a good source of omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, if, if you're going to use them, what I'd recommend is grind them up. Get either buy them ground, or if you are buying the whole seeds, then grind them up in in a grinder. It could be like a coffee grinder or something like that, because it's much easier for your body to digest and absorb ground flax seeds versus whole flax seeds. 
If you eat them whole, chances are they're going to go right out your hole <laughs> on the way out when you do a number two. Whereas if you grind them up, then they're going to be able to be broken down and absorbed and utilized better by your body. So if you are going to have flax seeds and you want it as a source of fiber and a source of omega-3s and all that, grind them up first. And yeah, I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with flax seeds. I just personally don't eat them myself. And as far as age is concerned, I, I don't think that has an impact. It's not one of the, <laughs> it's like the whole thing about, you know, oh, is protein bad for, for young people or flax seeds bad for young people? No, like young people have the optimal digestion. Like when you're young, your body and your digestive system is working at its peak. Like you can digest and absorb and utilize stuff that old people have trouble digesting, right? Like look at teenagers. Like how often do you hear of teenagers complaining about heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, gas, and diarrhea? Like hardly ever, unless they're sick, you know, got the flu or something. But then think of old people. How often are they complaining of heartburn, upset stomach, indigestion, gas and bloating and diarrhea? Like all the time. That's why they're drinking Pepto-Bismol and chewing Tums like they're going out of style, right? Antacids coming out their yin-yang. Like young people's digestive systems are really good and they can handle protein and they can handle a lot of foods that older farts can't handle. So uh, it, it's almost ironic. Like it should be reversed, like everyone's saying, oh, I don't think protein is safe for young people. Like they, they can digest it better than the old farts can digest it. <laughs> like it doesn't, it doesn't make sense, really. I mean, I, I my four-year-old son, he has protein, right? Like, I mean, I don't give him protein shakes all the time. I mean, sometimes I'll make up a, a smoothie with protein powder and give it to him. But one of the things I'd like to mix up is my high protein blender ice cream where I put in the, the protein powder and the frozen berries and all that. And I mean, he'll share that with me. Uh, we make high protein oatmeal. We have high protein pancakes. I mean, he eats that. He eats protein bars. I mean, if, if he wants a chocolate bar, I give him a protein bar, right? So, I mean, like, he's eating protein at four years old, and he's in great health, and he's lean. I mean, heck, he, the other day, he, he was just, uh, he was doing some leg raises because he wanted to work out, and he was mimicking, he was watching some of my YouTube videos. We were doing it together, and, and he's seen me doing leg raises, and then he tried them. And, I mean, he started doing leg raises and I kid you not, man. Like you can see the ab definition popping through, right? And he's four years old. It's like awesome. I love it. And I mean, I'm, I'm having him eat healthy foods, right? Fruits and veg and protein. Boom. Right? Just laying, laying the foundation from a young age. All right, moving on. What else we got? We have Mo Samo 17. He says, I love you. All right. Share the love. Thank you. <laughs> David Jones says, hello, sir. Hope all is well. Looking good as always. Thank you, David Jones. Things are going well. Much appreciated. We have Jerry saying, I, after I started doing intermittent fasting, I no longer have a craving for burgers and pizza. I refine snacks. I feel so good when I wake up in the morning. I'm never leaving intermittent fasting. Well, I'm glad to hear that it's working for you. And you know what? As long as it's working for you, continue to do it. As long as you're working, as long as it's working, as long as you enjoy it, continue to do it. And I'm not going to discourage anyone from doing it. But I, I will just share my own insights on it. I found personally, I got really good results intermittent fasting for about six months. After six months, and I started to get more active, meaning pushing myself harder in the gym, pushing myself harder with long distance cycling and stuff like that. Uh, I needed more consistent nutrition to fuel the demands and plus to help regulate my blood sugar. So I found that intermittent fasting, it has its time and place. Uh, but the leaner you get, the more active you are, the harder it's going to be to stick to an intermittent fasting approach. Just kind of give you a heads up. But if it's working for now, you enjoy it and, and you whatever, like keep doing it. Right? If, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right? That's my advice. But uh, again, I, I made videos sharing that. If you want to see my videos about it, just do a search for Lee Hayward intermittent fasting and it'll pop up there on YouTube. All right. Alan's asking, what's the worst injury you've had in my bodybuilding career? Torn pec, or not torn, torn, torn pec, torn biceps. Never had a torn pec, thankfully. Torn both biceps, torn my lat, and I tore my tricep. Those were my worst ones. One of my biceps healed properly. One is shorter than the other, and so it's, it was a partial tendon tear, and that will never heal up. The one that was in the lat, tricep tie-in area. That one was partial tendon tears in there. I've got a gap in my armpit that'll never heal. 
And thankfully the tricep tear, which just happened a couple of years ago, not that long ago, that was just muscle fibers and it actually healed up. The thing you need to look at with, with muscle tears, if it's just the fibers themselves, the muscle fibers, they will usually recover and heal and you'll be able to get back to normal again. If there's tendon damage or ligament damage, that's going to be a permanent injury. That's going to lead to some deformation, shorter muscles. Uh, in some cases, it may need surgery to be reattached. It all depends. But if it's just the muscle fibers themselves, they, they usually heal up fine on their own with no problem. Because the last bicep tear that I had and the last tricep tear I had, it was just muscle fiber tears. And I was very fortunate that they did heal up. Uh, but those are, those are the worst ones. I mean, now I've had other nagging injuries, you know, strained shoulders and pulled muscles and, and, and that kind of stuff. Um, but those are the major ones. When you're tearing muscles and tendons and ligaments, that, that's, that's the bad stuff, right? That's the ones that are really going to hold you back. And even those injuries, like the, the, the lat trice, this one is, is right in the pit of my armpit. That's where it is. So it's right in the, where the lat connects into the tricep area there. That's been the worst one that one because I, I can't deadlift heavy anymore because once I start lifting heavy, I can feel the strain in, in there in the tendons. That's, that's definitely been the worst one. It affected pretty much all my training from that point on. Like once that happened, like powerlifting training was out the window, heavy one rep maxes of anything was out the window, right? That one really, uh, that one really held me back big time. And that was a long time ago. I mean, that's been 2008. I did that one and I haven't been the same since and I never will be. All right, what else we got there? Um, during, this is from AT. He says, during fasting, no water for hours, not only food, should I continue taking creatine or recycle it? So I'm going to assume, just using my crystal ball and magic vision that I have here, that you're going through Ramadan because that's one of the few times where you would fast with no water uh, for, for several hours. So you're going through Ramadan. Should you continue taking creatine? You know what? I, I'd put the creatine on pause for the month of, of Ramadan. Once it's over and you're back to training and eating and everything on, on a regular schedule, then you go back to taking creatine. Uh, like all, all that stuff, anything that's going to put excess strain on your body or you need extra water to, to help with the digestion and absorption, like limit that because obviously if you're in a dehydrated state for most of the day with no food and water, then you don't want to be taking stuff that's going to require your body to need water to help it utilize and, and digest and process it through. So I, I wouldn't take creatine if, if I was going through a, a, a period of fasting like that. Just my two cents worth. Now, again, I've never done Ramadan or anything like that. So I'm probably not the best person to ask for advice on it. Probably be better to go find bodybuilders and, and fitness influencers who are Muslim and go through Ramadan. They'd probably be able to give you better advice because they went through it and they have more experience. I'm just kind of giving what I think I would do <laughs> if I was going through it, but I've never done it. Uh, Owen's asking, outside of a good diet and adequate protein intake, what supplements, vitamins do you take and what are recommended for men over 40 in intake of creatine, fish oil, etc.? All right, good question. This is what I focus on personally. And as I've matured in bodybuilding and fitness and I've been around the game and seen a lot of stuff come and go, I've come to rely a lot less on the bodybuilding supplements and more on just general health, fitness and nutrition supplements. So the so-called muscle builders and the fat burners and the anabolic magic dust that you see at the supplement shops, you know, that you're, 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 GNCs and your Popeyes and your, 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 your get jacked supplement shop. I'm not a big fan of, of a lot of the stuff you see there. I'm more of a fan of things that are going to help with your overall health, fitness, and longevity, and just making sure that you're meeting all your nutritional needs. So some common ones, like uh, common vitamin deficiencies that a lot of people have. Vitamin D3 is a common vitamin deficiency. So I'll supplement with that. The B vitamins, common vitamin deficiency. I'll supplement with that. Zinc and magnesium, those are common deficiencies, so I'll supplement with those. Uh, Omega-3s, a common deficiency as well. Most people are not getting enough omega three, so I'll supplement with uh, uh, high-potency fish oil supplements to make sure I'm getting those. Uh, what else? The creatine, I do take creatine monohydrate, five grams a day as part of my vitamins. Uh, I'm trying to think what else is there. 
zinc, magnesium, the B vitamins, D3. Uh, I'm drawing a brain fart here. It's all out in the cupboard there. I could go out in the cupboard and see what it is now. But uh, greens powder, that's another one. I mean, I technically, I don't even consider protein and greens supplements, but they are. Because like, if I can't eat solid food protein, then I'll have a protein shake. Uh, or, or protein powder mixed in with something like whether it's a smoothie or you know high protein oatmeal or whatever uh if, if i can't get vegetables then i'll have greens powder so that's i'm having solid food protein and solid food vegetables with every meal if i can't get the solid food then i'm having the, the supplemental protein and the supplemental veggies through protein and greens powder so th those as well and and that's pretty much it like that's that's my my basics right there just making sure that i'm getting the vitamins and minerals and, uh, you know, the, the, the basics covered right there. Now I will take some digestive enzymes and probiotics as well to help with gut health. Um, what else? That's pretty much it. Like that's, I'm not a big supplement junkie, if you will. Like I, uh, all the, the anabolic muscle builders and pre-workouts and stuff like that. I mean, I, I don't take a lot of that. I really don't. Right. I mean, it's, it's not, uh, <sighs> it's hit or miss. Like, you know, the, the, the benefits of it are very slim to none. When you look at the bigger picture, most of it is just overpriced gunk that you really don't need. And a lot of times you could be taking it. And then when you come off it, you don't even notice any difference anyways. Right. So it's, I personally don't use a lot of supplements. I just focus on basic nutrition and filling in the gaps with some of the ones that are the common de vitamin deficiencies for most people. All right, Samuel saying there's Taco Bell in Ontario. Well, I don't live in Ontario. <laughs> in Newfoundland, there's not, right? Big difference. Uh, what else we got? Who else is joining in? Russell. Hey, Russell, how's it going? He says, are there any benefits to eating protein pre-bedtime, and does it help with sleep? All right, it, I don't know whether or not it'll help with sleep, but there's definitely benefits to eating protein before bed. And personally, I always eat before bed. I can't sleep on an empty stomach. I just, I don't like the feeling of going to bed hungry. I find that when I have food in my belly, I can go to bed happy, right? When my, when my belly's happy, I'm happy and I can sleep. I, I don't like to try and go to bed on an empty stomach because then I end up waking up in the middle of the night, my belly growling. And when my belly's growling, I'm not sleeping. Right, so that's the way it is. I always eat before bed. That's like non-negotiable, guaranteed bedtime snack, and I've been doing it for years. Right, whether I'm trying to build muscle, whether I'm trying to lose fat, whatever, I always eat before bed. That's guaranteed, non-negotiable. Boom, I always do it. And the benefits, one, I find it actually helps me sleep. Now, I mean, you'll have to try it and see for yourself because I've heard some people say, "Oh, I, I sleep better on an empty stomach." Some people are somewhere in the middle. Uh, I always got to have food in my stomach. That's just me, but you'll have to experiment and see what works the best for you. But as far as a bodybuilding, muscle building point of view, like that is an important time to get some protein in your system because your body can then digest it and utilize that over the course of the night. And during the night, your fasting hours, your body is going, that's the longest time you'll go without any nourishment in your system. So it's important to have some protein there and take advantage of that, right? That the whole rest and recovery process that happens overnight and having the protein in your system can can certainly aid with that uh, whole re recovery and rebuilding process. So yeah, I definitely have protein as part of my bedtime snack. Uh, Jeffrey is joining in saying, greeting from the Netherlands. Welcome. Glad to have you tuning in. All you guys over in Europe, it must be getting late. Like this got to be like, you know, burning the midnight oil for some of you. Uh, we have Steve joining in. How's it going? We have Joe Tan. What do you think about intermittent fasting? We kind of briefly discussed that, and I've got videos up on YouTube. Just do a search for Lee Hayward intermittent fasting, and I, I long videos, like 10 plus minutes long, just talking about intermittent fasting. But the, the, the simple answer is it works in certain situations, and it doesn't work in others. <laughs> Right. I'm not neglecting your question. I'm just trying to be efficient with the time here, right? That's all. But I like to say, I have videos up there that covers that question in detail. So you just got to do a, a YouTube search, Lee Hayward Intermittent Fasting, and you'll get it. Okay. We got Samuel saying he followed me on Zwift. I'll need to follow him back. All right. We'll do that. Good stuff. I, I'm new to Zwift, so I'm not, I don't think I've even followed anybody on Zwift yet. I, you know, uh, 
I set it up for me to go riding. I haven't set it up as a social media platform yet, but I guess I'm starting right now with, with you. <laughs> All right. You'll be my first Zwift friend. <laughs> yeah. I, I like it. Like the thing I, I do on Zwift, I do the, like the most recently, the FTP test. I mean, I, I love that. I love the, the virtual races, you know, doing some of those. I mean, that's, it's a lot of fun and did some group rides and, and sometimes I just do it on my own. Like I don't do any group rides or whatever, just, just ride on my own. But it's, it's fun. Cause you're getting that video game feel with your cardio, especially when you're doing a race. Like, I mean, cause man, you like that's high intensity cardio at its best. Cause you, going flat out i mean just visualize a, a racing game you know like any racing game you play on you know computer games or or playstation games or whatever except you are the power source right so i mean that's that's so cool because i mean you you see the other guys riding and that and you want to crank it up i mean it's just a killer workout i love it a uh, young boy rousal tips to lose weight eat less exercise more those are those are two great tips to start <laughs> seriously um if the best thing to do because i mean like that's that's a very generic question and i kind of addressed this at the start like if when it comes to these questions it's best to ask a specific question where i can give you a specific answer but if you have some generic questions like you want a customized training and nutrition program to help you with your your you know, fitness and fat loss goals or muscle building goals like feel free to reach out to me you can send me an email my personal email address is lee h at lee hayward.com or you can friend request me over on facebook and chat there as well uh but when it comes to that like that, that's a very blanket you know statement like tips to lose weight like how much weight do you want to lose how old are you are you working out right now uh you know what's your current eating plan like there's there's so many things that I would need to know in order. I like, I need to know what you're doing in order to give you tips on how you can improve it. Right. That's why for now, I'm just giving you the blanket answer of eat less food and exercise more, right? Eat less junk, eat more good stuff, fill up on the protein and veggies, right? Daily cardio along with weight training. You know, that, that if you did that, like that would put you in the right direction towards losing weight. I guarantee it. But again, if you want a specific, you know, system to follow, feel free to uh, message me, you know, send me an email or send me a message through Facebook or whatever, and we can chat about it. Uh, John is saying, I remember, Lee, on how to hold the hand grippers higher up on the hand. Yep, that's right. <laughs> I'll, I'll elaborate on John's question there. He's talking about the heavy grips hand grippers. And I have videos explaining how to use these, but they're old videos. I'm talking like old, old, old school. But if you are using a hand gripper, when you set the gripper, you want to set it so that it's higher up in your hand, not lower in your hand. Like you wouldn't want to be gripping it right here because the leverage sucks big time. You want to be down at the end of the handles as far as you physically can so you get maximum leverage. And ideally, you want to set it up so that your pinky finger is right on the edge of the gripper handle. Like that's as low as you physically can go and get maximum leverage and boom. That's where you would want to set for, for gripper training. So again, as high as you can, or as, as low down the handle as you can, your pinky finger right on the edge. And that's where you want to be when you're doing gripper training for maximum leverage and to get the most range of motion from the gripper as well. And I carry those over on my website if you want to check them out. And there's, you know, there's a, a hand gripper training manual and stuff there as well. Like though, that's an underrated training tool, grippers, because a lot of people, a weak grip can hold back a lot of things. Like if, if you're stronger in the grip, you're going to feel stronger in general. Like you're, if you can hold on to heavier weight, you're going to be able to lift heavier weight. So it's it's just uh, it's a the grip is a weak link for a lot of people. All right, Jerry saying, I might come to Canada for studies. I'd love to meet you. Show, show you my legs, my best body part to train. I love cycling, but I can't due to the virus. I have to run on the treadmill. Okay. Just a heads up. Like, that sounded a bit weird. Like, I would love to meet you and show you my legs. Right? Hey, right, that, that's that's cool. I mean, hey, right? If you want to show off your legs, that's fine. But it just it just sounds weird. That's all. <laughs> all right, all right. That's that's the first time anybody wanted to show me their legs today. Seriously. <laughs> all 
Uh, Kerry Kerry is joining and he says, yeah, those Yoda online, Yo Yoda, <laughs> yoga online classes are great for active recovery. Yes, absolutely. Highly recommended. Uh, hey coach, do you think three days a week, full body, five sets of 10 is too much volume? I'm doing one major compound for chest and back and legs and accessory for buys and hands and tries and blah, 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 blah. I, I do three days a week total body right now. That's that's the way I do it. Now, I will change up the exercises, so I'm not doing the exact same exercises every single day, but that's what I do. I do total body workouts three days a week, and I, I enjoy it. And if you want to see some samples of how I actually go about splitting them up, I put some playlists. I'm actually in the process of doing a new playlist now uh, with my wife. It's our husband and wife get back in shape after a lockdown workout routine. And there's two videos up now. I'm in the process. I got the third one shot. Just need to get it edited and posted, which hopefully I'll get done this week. Another one that's up there as well is there's a father and son workout. And that's very similar. Three day per week, uh, total body, each workout focus on different exercises. And the thing I like about it is when you're doing total body, you're hitting all your major muscle groups frequently. But then when you change up the exercises, you're getting the variety in there as well. And the reason I'm such a fan of total body training right now is because I'll be honest, I'm not as consistent with my workouts as I used to be back in my pre daddy days. Like if, if you have kids, you, you, you don't have control of your schedule. That's the truth, right? <laughs> young kids, especially, right? If, if you have young kids that you have to look after, you're not in control of your schedule. They come first, you come second. That's the, that's the priority ranking. Now, before kids, right, it was me. I'm priority, right? If I want to go to the gym, I'm going to the gym. I don't care, right? It's me. I don't have that luxury anymore. So I can't be going to the gym six days a week anytime that I want. So I find three days a week and total body workouts is ideal because if I skip a day here and there, it's no big deal because I'm doing total body workouts. So I'm not neglecting anything for long. Whereas if you're doing a split routine and you're, haphazard with your schedule and you miss a day here and there, then it can throw off your entire schedule. And just like, if you miss a, a couple days in the gym here and there, like it could be over a week or more before you hit the same muscle group again. And like, you're going too long of a gap between body part training. Whereas with total body, even if I miss a workout, Hey, I'm still hitting that body part twice in a week, which is pretty darn good. I mean, if I miss two workouts and I only get to the gym once, well, I'm still hitting everything once a week. So that's why I like the total body schedule uh, because, again, everything's getting hit more frequently. And if, if I'm on track, then everything's getting worked three times a week. And it's, it's just enjoyable. I, I like that split. Another benefit is you're training a little bit for, for all the major muscle groups, and I don't feel painfully sore the next day. Whereas if you go in there and you do like 20 sets of chest or 20 sets of legs or 20 sets of back and you just annihilate that muscle group, you're going to feel painfully sore the next day. But if you go in and you just do a few sets for each major muscle group, then you're going to be able to recover from it and not feel sore. So like you're not, your legs aren't going to be so sore that you can't sit on the toilet or your shoulders aren't going to be so sore that you can't lift your arms up. You know, that that's the nice thing about the total body is it's small, frequent, manageable muscle stimulation where you're stimulating the muscles and not annihilating them. And you can actually recover and it just works well for a regular, a regular schedule of, for people who want to be active and not feel pain and sore and, and fatigue all the time. All right, let's see what else we got. I'm potato says, should I work two muscles each workout? That really depends on you and your schedule. And I kind of touched on it a bit before. If you have time to train more frequently and you want to break it up, so you're doing two muscle groups a session, then yeah, make it work. If you want to do total body workouts three days a week, you can make that work. If you want to go the old school bro split and you can do six days a week, then you can make that work. Like it really, it's not one is right, wrong, good, bad, better or worse. It depends on you and your schedule and what you can commit to. If you can commit to more frequent workouts and you want to do break it up so that you're only doing one or two muscle groups per workout, then that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. That still works. But is it ideal for you and your situation? That's what you need to ask yourself. All right. Buck Lau says, I like eggs because they are good for protein. I mean, there's good protein foods, but eggs, nothing can compare. Is he even reading the chat? I'm from Russia. <laughs> I, I, I went on a ramble there. So I, wait, you know, I am potato. Oh, no, never mind. I am potato says he works two muscles. I already answered that one. Buck Lau says he likes the eggs because eggs are good protein. Nothing can compare to eggs. 
well, I, I like eggs too, but I'm hey, man, there's, there's other foods I can compare to eggs, especially from a taste perspective. But nothing wrong with eggs. I eat eggs on a regular basis. Good protein. And I am potatoes asking if I'm reading the chat. Obviously, I am right here. I'm going through them. I'm answering the questions in real time, right? So if you posted your question later in the chat, I'm not going to get to it until I scroll through. And we have somebody's from Russia. I can't even pronounce your name because it's in Russian, but welcome to the chat. Glad to have you joining in. And it must be late in Russia or early, one or the other. I'm not sure. It depends on what time zone you're in, but welcome. Stefan is asking, can you help me with adding muscle? Yes. If you want some help with a customized muscle building, training program, nutrition program, all that stuff, send me an email and we can chat about it. Because as I mentioned before, like that's, that's a very big, broad question, right? Like that's, that's how do you build muscle? Like I need to know about you, what you're doing, your situation, your goals, all that kind of stuff. So that I can customize a plan to you and your situation. So if you would like some help with that, Send me an email, leeh at leehayward.com. I'll have my contact information down in the video description of this. Uh, or you can friend me up on Facebook and message me through there as well. And we can chat about an action plan that works for you and your specific situation and goals. Steve is saying it's over, over in the UK, nearly 11 p.m. Okay, well, it's getting late, but it's Friday night. So you're, you're allowed to stay up later on Friday night. I'll give you permission for that. Uh, thanks for your video on protein coffee. I loved it, but I can't have it anymore. You think it will work with tea? Protein tea. Um, nah, just, just drink a protein shake and then have your tea. Why, why can't you have coffee? Is it just don't sit well with you? I mean, I, I love coffee. I, I drink coffee in the AM and I drink tea in the PM, right? Which reminds me, I'm actually getting low on the tea here now. So tea with Lee is almost over. But, uh, Protein with tea, I don't think it would work. I, I've never tried it, so I can't really comment, but it just doesn't sound right. Another thing you got to consider, too, is tea is usually a lot hotter than coffee, so you'd have to let it cool more before you mix the protein in with it. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Proceed with caution. I mean, you can always try it for one cup. If it works out, great. If not, then it's only one cup of tea and one scoop of protein gone to waste. So it's, it's not a big deal either way. Give it a shot. You know, says, man, I did that 12 eggs a day for 30 days. Remember, I got pretty, got cut pretty good. Um, 12 eggs a day for 30 days. Do you remember? I'm not sure. I get a lot of questions. Maybe, is that all you ate for 30 days? <laughs> 12 eggs a day? Hey. Anyway, if it works for you and get, gets you ripped, good stuff. I mean, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's my answer. Uh, young Boy Rousel says, thank you. You're welcome. E Nation Beats says, hello. Hello. Uh, how many times do you take to do bodybuilding? I, how many times you take to do bodybuilding? I've done, how many shows have I, I'm assuming you're asking how many shows I've done in bodybuilding? Uh, I've started competing for the first time in 1995 at 17, and I did my last show in 2011. So 16 years. Now there was there was a couple of times where I actually took some time off, and there was a couple of times where I competed more than once in a year. But it was pretty much every year for 16 years. That's what I did. Right. For, that was my bodybuilding career, if you will. And then in 2011, I took some time off, and I haven't competed since. But I'm pondering, pondering the idea of making a comeback in the Masters over 40 category. And if I do, it will be the classic bodybuilding, which is uh, a lighter division than the open bodybuilding. And that would actually work out well for my my level of, of size at this stage, because I'm not as big as I used to be. I mean, back in the day, I was a lot bigger and fuller and blah, blah, blah. But now uh, the, the height weight cutoff for someone who's 5'6", I would need to weigh in at 175, I believe. Last I checked anyway, that's what it was. Um, so that's what I would have to get down to. So, I mean, that would be a really good weight for me, 175, five foot six. I mean, I, you know, I, I, that would be something that I could realistically uh, look into doing. So who knows? Maybe. No promises, but it's, it's – the thought is out there, put it that way, to make a comeback in the Masters Classic Bodybuilding Division. Of course, I was planning on doing it last year. That was my full-on intention. I was going to do it last year, but COVID came around and – the whole world got shut down and 
of course, the, the, that goal was like a fart in the wind, gone out, gone out the door. But who knows? COVID permitting, there might be a bodybuilding show coming up this year, and I may do it. Uh, Carlos is asking, is it true that fast food restaurants like McDonald's have gotten rid of their healthier food options such as salads, grilled chicken sandwiches, and so, and if so, why? I don't know. I haven't been to McDonald's in months. I really don't know what they have on the menu. And that's that's not exaggeration. Like I, I can't remember the last time I was in McDonald's. Like I haven't been in McDonald's since before COVID, and it might have been long before then. So I have no idea what McDonald's has in their menu. Go to their website, <laughs> McDonald's.com or whatever it is, and I'm sure they will let you know what's on the menu. Uh, Malik says, say my name. All right. Hi, Malik. Uh, and he's repeating that. Say my name. Say my name. Say my name. All right. Malik, Malik, Malik. Uh, Rob, the wayward woodworker, says, hey, Lee. Uh, hey, Rob, how's it going? Uh, Mick is joining in, says, I got some brucitis in my right shoulder, just got clearance from the physio to do bench presses again. Can't do overhead presses. Can you suggest anything for shoulders without arms going above the shoulders? Lateral raises, side, front, and rear raises, that would work the shoulders. And in fact, you can build great shoulder development without doing overhead presses. You know, just side lateral raises, front raises, reverse flies. Like, you can hit all three heads of the deltoids with just those. And what I would recommend is go super light. I mean, probably even try like resistance bands or if you have any of the like the, the lateral raise machines at your gym, like at our gym, we've got a side lateral raise machine. Uh, you can do the reverse pec deck for the rear delts, like something along those lines and, and just kind of go through the motions and see if you can comfortably do the movement pattern and then gradually increase the weight. But the, the, the most important thing is to avoid re-aggravating that injury. And then that's what happens a lot of times. The biggest mistake a lot of people make when they're on the mend from, from injuries and mobility issues is they try to do too much too soon and then they um, end up re-injuring themselves and setting themselves back even further. So while you're in this phase where you're able to get back into the gym again, you're able to start exercising again, be super, super conservative. Do not push it too hard or you're just going to you know, cause more harm than good. You're in a very critical phase right now. So tread lightly tread lightly like you're you're crossing thin ice that's the way you want to approach your workouts uh what else we got there i lost my spot sometimes the the chat jumps on me when i'm scrolling through it's the little trackpad on my laptop that i'm using and i sometimes touch it the wrong way and it you know spits goes right through the chat and i lose my spot where was it okay next back here peter paul peter paul picked a peck of pickle peppers <laughs> and he's just commenting about Malik, asking people to say his name. All right. <laughs> uh, Brian says, strength is absolute. It's important to be strong in this savage, cold world. I, I don't know if this is a savage, cold world or not. I mean, it's a, certainly a weird world, but I don't know if it's savage and cold. It's starting to warm up here. We're in, we're in the positive plus degrees. Our snow is melt, so it's not savage and cold. But I agree with you. Strength is absolutely important, for sure. Uh, Jerry saying, whatever I lost and whatever I'm going to gain, I did it in my home gym. Yay, showing legs was weird. <laughs> All right. You know what? I've I've made some good progress in the home gym. I mean, when I started, I did my first eight years of working out in a home gym. I still got a home gym now. But after experiencing a commercial gym and commercial gym equipment and just the atmosphere of the proper gym. Like I, I wouldn't want to go back. I mean, if, if I have to, yes. Like if we're going lockdown again, of course I'm going to work out from home, but if given the choice, I would much rather go to the gym. I get a better quality workout when I'm at the gym, but bottom line, whatever you do consistently, you can still make it work. But most people, most people, will we'll train harder and do more and get better results if they're training at a gym versus training at home. Just my observation. But of course, there's always exceptions to the rule. Uh, what else we got? Bodybuilding supplements says, don't underestimate the power of compound exercises. Make sure you include them in your workout routine. They're your best tools for maximum muscle growth. Bicep pose XX. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bodybuilding Supplements. Bodybuilding Supplements, sponsoring the video chat with a tip of the day. <laughs> 
And we have somebody typing a comment in a foreign language, which I have no idea what you're saying. So we'll move on. I speak English, no other language. I'm kind of, you know, limited in that. So if, if you can type an English comment, I might be able to give you an English answer, but I can't speak another language, unfortunately. Uh, Steve is saying, apparently caffeine is not good for my bladder. I was really ill last year. Okay. Well, there's still caffeine in tea. Tea, he was the one asking about the protein coffee. Well, guess what? You could do decaf. <laughs> you can get a decaf coffee. Granted, it's not real. It's like, you know, decaf coffee is like non-alcoholic beer, but it still works. But yeah, you can do it. You can do a decaf copy. CRDBR says eating a carbon copy of your 2,500 calorie diet. Uh, use nutritional calculator to figure out calorie intake. Oatmeal with protein is awesome. Reduce some body fat, but have plateaued. Any recommendations? Feel free to reach out to me and we can discuss your situation and see if we can optimize that eating plan to fit you and your situation right? Like that eating plan and any eating plan out there, it's, it's a guideline to go by, but like, just because it works for me, doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Right. So if, if you want to help with a customized approach and to get past that plateau, reach out to me, send me an email, send me a message and we can chat. Someone else is typing another comment in a foreign language. I would love to help, but I don't know what you're saying. So we're just going to move on. And Mick is saying, thanks. I'll go super light. Good stuff. Uh, Jerry is saying, last time I ate a burger and McDonald's was six months ago. I have no interest in going to there or any other fast food restaurants. They add too many chemicals. I can I can appreciate that. I mean, they're, they're masters at fast food, but it's not quality food. <laughs> at least I don't enjoy it. I mean, I... The, the, when I was younger, the, the 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 joke was it's Rotten Ronnie's, right? Or, you know, Ronald McDonald and Rotten Ronnie's. That's what we always called McDonald's because every time anybody ate McDonald's, they had like the stinkiest farts and usually had to go visit the restroom afterwards for a number two. And yeah, it just, yeah, it's not quality nutrition. Put it that way. Eagle Eye John says he trains at home. Good stuff. If it works for you and you enjoy it, keep doing it. George says, hello, sir. I used to do your plans when I started working out many years ago. I want to thank you after all these years. Hey, appreciate it. Glad to, glad you enjoy the workouts. And like I say, there's a, there's a library of them up on YouTube. Heck, we've got over a thousand videos on the Total Fitness Bodybuilding YouTube channel and more being added all the time. So good stuff. Glad to have you following along and joining us today. We have, yes, 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 yes. That's the username saying, can you say happy birthday to me because it's my birthday? Happy birthday, yes. <laughs> I, I'm sure that's not your real name. I mean, I would I would actually say a proper happy birthday to you if I knew your real name, but happy birthday to you, right? Hope it's a good one. Okay, Steve says he drinks the decaf. All right, uh, what else we got? All right, we're at the end of the chat. Basically, people are just commenting on stuff that I've already commented on. So yeah, we're at the end of the chat, which is cool. And we've only been an hour and 13 minutes. I always say I'm going to do an hour-ish, but there, the tea is gone. We're hour and 13 minutes in. The comments and questions are answered, and I'm going to call it a day. So I hopefully you enjoyed this video chat. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I always appreciate it. You know, thumbs up and comments and all that good stuff. And I will be back again now next week, same time, same place with another live video chat. And if you want to stay in touch in the meantime, friend me up over on Facebook, right? Do a search for Lee Hayward on Facebook. And I got my link down in the comments or description of this video. And I'm doing daily live videos over on Facebook. So if, if you want to get more of this, you actually enjoy these interactions and these conversations and you want more of it and you can't get enough of Lee, <laughs> then head on over to Facebook and friend me up there. And I'm doing daily live video lessons where we take one topic a day and go deep into that topic. That's the idea. So it's not a Q&A back and forth like this. It's just short and sweet, focusing on one topic, we'll blast that topic. And then next day I pick another topic and boom, blast that one. But again, they're live video lessons. So friend me up on Facebook and we can have a chat. And of course, if you do want to discuss a customized training, nutrition plan or anything like that, feel free to message me and we can discuss it, have a chat and see if we can come up with a realistic action plan that works for you. All right, guys, I'm going to clue it up and I will talk to you next week.
take care. Over and out.